guys. Just getting a quick ride in on a street triple on amazing, beautiful Sunday morning. And I wanted to run something by you guys. I've got a dilemma. I'm not sure what I want to do. Uh, talking about on the Toyota 4Runner, I've been considering... Uh, been considering getting a supercharger installed on the 2017 Toyota 4Runner and uh, you know there's a pretty good list of pros and cons that I've been uh, mulling over and I'm still on the fence I don't know what to do I mean I thought it would be pretty cut and dry decision uh, my main complaint with the 4Runner since I very first test drove it in 2016 was just a lack of get up and go for like passing or uh, towing or uh, freeway on ramp entrance it just doesn't have what I would consider um, a, a good amount of horsepower to, and, and torque to, to do those things um, the way I would like them done. I mean, most people are pretty happy and uh, I'm not sure if it has to do with the fact that I live up here at altitude at uh, 5,400 feet. But uh, my general experience with the, the 4Runner just, you know, as an everyday driver, it's fine. But, you know, if you're on a road trip and you want to pass somebody on a hill or on an incline, it, it sometimes you just can't do it. Some of these mountain passes that I drive through uh, for my job, you know, I travel all over the state. Um, you'll get like a quarter mile or a half mile passing lane to pass a really slow truck. And you know, there's traffic behind you that wants to pass as well. And sometimes that forerunner, even if you floor it, it just doesn't have the, the guts to, to get up and move. And so, you know, I've been looking at the Magnuson Supercharger. I think it's a great option. And so some of the pros to that Supercharger are, I believe that it was developed by the same guys that developed the TRD uh, Supercharger for the Tundra and the 4Runner uh, that unfortunately Toyota no longer sells or supports. So I think the engineering behind it should be pretty solid. Another pro is that Magnuson offers a three year, 36,000 mile warranty. And so that was, uh, that's pretty reassuring to know that a company will stand behind their product and cover anything you know, related damage or, or uh, issues that happen for three years or 36,000 miles. That's pretty good, I think. I don't think there's a lot of companies that do that. Uh, I could be wrong, but I haven't seen many. When you install an aftermarket part directly on your uh, engine like that, And of course, the biggest pro to getting the Magnuson Supercharger installed would be an additional 100 to 150 horsepower, depending on, you know, whatever the factors are, the, the installation. So getting that much horsepower would be fantastic. I think that would be exactly what I'd be looking for. I've always compared the 4Runner to the Tundra and unfortunately it's not a very fair comparison with the Tundra having the iForce V8 in it. That's, you know, almost 400 in horsepower and the 4Runner has 270 and I'm sure that's not at the wheel. So why don't I just jump right in and do this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. 
and I don't know if these reasons justify me not doing it. Uh, obviously, the biggest reason is the price. Um, I reached out to a couple of shops here locally in the Denver metro area, and uh, getting the supercharger installed looks like it could cost anywhere from $6,500 to $8,000, depending on where I take it. Now, with that being said, um, the first place I called had one in stock and the installation and setup and everything was 8,000, 8,200 is what they wanted to charge for the supercharger and for the install, for the setup. I thought that was a little high, so I, I looked around. I actually called a Magnuson certified uh, installation uh, partner, which is a, uh, a speed shop out in Aurora. I, I'm not going to name the shop yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to use them, but uh, they did not have a supercharger in stock, and they said that there was going to be anywhere from a two to four week uh, wait time on ordering one just because they're in uh, a little bit of a back order situation right now. So, with that in mind, their pricing was considerably less. They offered me the supercharger at cost, so for I think it's $5,600, and then we're going to charge me $1,200 for the installation and setup. So that's $6,800. So that's that's $1,400 less than the first shop that I called. And since this place is a certified speed shop, uh, certified Magnuson reseller, they're also offering to do uh, dyno numbers before and after the installation. The other shop did not offer any dynoing at all. So I think it's pretty cut and dry who I should use to install. Uh, the question is, uh, do I do it? So number one con is the price. If I spend $6,400, $6,600 on the Forerunner, I would never get that money back. So if I resold the vehicle, it would absolutely have to be to the specific right uh, seller, buyer, excuse me, to purchase that vehicle to get my money back out of it. Otherwise, if I'm trading in or um, if I'm just selling to somebody that doesn't care about the supercharger, I may get a few hundred or maybe even a thousand or two, but I'll never get that $6,800 back. And I wouldn't expect to. I, I would just like to my vehicle to keep its value the best as it could. So there's the number one con. The number two con is that with the supercharger installed, you have to run premium fuel. So here in Colorado, premium fuel is 91 octane and usually runs about 40 to 60 cents a gallon more. Than the uh, standard or mid grade, which is kind of a rip off here in Colorado, you know, because of the altitude here in the thinner air, we get ripped off on our fuel. Uh, 85 octane is considered low grade. 87 is mid grade and 91 is high grade. And in most other states, you'll see that uh, 87 is actually the low grade fuel. I've got three pretty good cons on the list, which is, you know, the resale, 
the price of the installation and uh, and having to use high octane fuel forever. So higher fuel costs, operating gas, all that good stuff. So there's three pretty decent cons. But do the pros outweigh the cons? That's the question. What do you guys think? Any opinions on that? Any of you install the supercharger in a Tundra or a Forerunner and have anything to say to weigh in? I'm, I'm really still on the fence. I'd, I'd really like to do it. I'm at a position right now where I can afford to do the installation. I'm just not sure about the long-term operating costs. You know, if anything were to happen with my employment situation or whatever financially, it would be hard to be, to have to throw, you know, high-grade fuel into my car every time I drive it. So there's that. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get on with my ride. But I wanted to run that by the masses, man. What, uh, what would you do?